Thanks very much, Rob, and uh, good evening, everyone. Can I uh, begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of land on which we're gathered and pay my respects to elders past and present? I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Bruce Armstrong, the Deputy Secretary uh, with the Department, Judy Crow, President of BAS, Vicky Fools, Deputy President of BAS, uh, Meredith Peace, President of the Australian Education Union, Stephen Niles, CEO of State Schools Relief, uh, Richard Irving, Head of Dist Distribution Bank of Australia, Chris Preslin, President of New South Wales Secondary Principals Council, Gabrielle Lee, President of the Victorian Principals Association, Julie Conbury, President of the Australian Principals Federation, and Linda Lee, President of the Association of Business Managers in Victorian State Schools. That is a list and all excellent people. And uh, welcome, welcome all. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me here tonight. Um, it's always a pleasure to be involved with the Victorian Association of State Secondary Principals, Secondary School Principals. The association is known for its dedication to the welfare and the excellence of our Victorian government secondary schools and the principals who lead them. And it's praise well deserved. As Minister for Education, I'm no stranger to addressing this group and it's great to see uh, many familiar faces uh, in the room, including my old colleague, Shai Margaret. <laughs> Tonight, uh, it's a bit of an opportunity to wrap up the, the last 18 months, the last uh, two budgets and the changes that we're starting to implement in our education system, um, and, and also an opportunity to highlight one of the future directions, one of the priorities uh, for, for me and for the government. So first, with a bit of a bit of a wrap up, I know some of you have heard this a few times, but it's good to, it's good to have a look at what we've done and the impact uh, that it's made collectively. As you know, we've set an ambitious agenda to make Victoria the education state. This is about creating a system where every child has the chance to achieve their potential and learn the skills they need for the future. That's why our government's first budget provided the single biggest education uh, injection of education funding in Victoria's history, providing almost four billion in additional funding to early childhood schools and training. And in this year's budget, back in late April, we continue to build on those strong foundations with the largest ever investment in school infrastructure, $1.1 billion. Uh, that is compared to the previous government, whose capital budget for three years in a row was $200 million. 1.1 billion in one budget. So that means over the last two budgets, we've delivered over $5 billion into Victoria's education system, including an unprecedented $1.8 billion into uh, upgrading uh, existing schools and building new schools. Last week, I was with uh, the Premier to launch the Victorian School Building Authority and turn the first sod on a new uh, vertical school in South Melbourne, the first government vertical school uh, due to open its doors in 2018. Uh, as I said, the first vertical government school in Victoria, five storeys of classrooms, open space on each level and competition grade netball courts uh, on its rooftop. Now that's a primary school but we're also building very innovative and exciting secondary schools in Richmond, in Grand, in Footscray, right across the state. And uh, actually, in total, 42 new government schools in the construction pipeline. Not one new school is open this year because it takes a couple of years to fund, design and build a new school. Not one new school is open this year. We've got 42 in the construction pipeline and over a 1,000 projects in total. And that will deliver, this building boom will deliver uh, over 4,000 construction jobs as well. It will ensure that the high quality teaching in our government schools is matched by a high quality learning environment where students are engaged, stimulated and encouraged to be critical and creative thinkers. The Victorian School Building Authority will deliver a record number of school building projects faster, which was one big message from principals, and with more community involvement than ever before that will give our kids access to the, to the education they need, particularly in the growth corridors, in our suburbs and our regional cities, and in state-of-the-art facilities that they deserve. But as you know more than anyone, 
Um, there is more to building the education state than building schools. To be the education state, we must deliver a better learning environment in our classrooms and better outcomes for our students. And that's where you come in. We know the hard work you put in every single day to ensure the students in your schools get the best possible education and enjoy their time at school. That they're happy, they're healthy, they're resilient, and they're getting a great education. Being a principal is tough. You need to be thick skinned. Actually, I could give you some lessons on being thick skinned. <laughs> you need to be thick skinned, detail driven, highly adaptable, creative, with a good sense of humour thrown in. You're part educator, mainly educator, but also part community leader, part counsellor, part administrator. At the same time, many of you tell me it's an incredibly rewarding job. Being at the helm of change and innovation and watching students make their way into the world. You make every day with your school community count and I can't thank you enough for the effort that you put in. Our world is a fast-paced one. Change is a constant we can depend on. And there's no doubt that to succeed in life, Victorian students need to be smarter, more creative, and more well-rounded than ever before. This month, the uh, 2016 preliminary NAPLAN results show that Victoria continues to be one of the highest performing states in Australia. Victorian students performed exceptionally in writing, with results for the primary year levels above all other states and secondary year levels above most. There are also positive long-term trends in the primary years with results in the year three and year five reading, uh, year three grammar and punctuation, and year five numeracy all improving over the time since 2008. This shows the value of investing in education and is testament to the hard work of our teachers and principals in providing our kids with a great education. Having said that, there's always room for improvement. We need to make sure we're giving our students the education they need for the future. That is why we've set ourselves a set of ambitious targets, system-wide targets. And you've heard these before, and I'll, I'll fly through them quickly. In reading and maths, over the next five years, year five, and the next 10 years to year nine, we're aiming for 25% more students to be reaching the highest levels of academic achievement. In scientific literacy, over the next 10 years, a 33% rise in the proportion of 15 year olds reaching the highest levels of achievement in scientific literacy. In critical and creative thinking, uh, over the next 10 years, more students will reach the highest levels of achievement in critical and creative thinking, and we'll have more groups to say about that in the months ahead. Another key target is to reduce the impact of disadvantage on student outcomes. We have the largest ever investment in needs-based funding, with $566 million for Victorian schools. We've increased equity funding by 70%. This delivers on our commitments under the Gonski Agreement through to 2017, and will drastically reduce the impact of disadvantage on outcomes by delivering money where it's needed most. Together with new programs to help our disadvantaged students to succeed in their education, we're confident we can build a school system that stop, stops kids falling through the cracks. And we're already seeing the positive impact of this funding. Uh, I try and visit as many schools as I possibly can, uh, and I always ask the principal, uh, how are you investing in the additional equity funding? Um, it's my favourite thing to do, and I always get good answers. And I'll, I'll, give, you a, I'll give you a couple. Uh, Northern Bay College created a career action plan to build a more connected and inclusive school. This has already delivered improved attendance and student outcomes, and Aboriginal students are reporting a great connection to their communities and their culture. At Sunshine College, they've invested in numeracy and literacy by developing specific resource materials, employing teaching assistants, additional teachers, staff support, and implementing a best practice strategy for staff. At Narrawarren College, they've introduced a specialist program of fusion music, allowing students to develop their artistic talent. In Melton Secondary College, equity funding has allowed the students to increase its focus on instructional coaching 
by freeing up teachers to engage in professional observation and feedback. And in Greater Shepparton, four secondary schools have pulled their equity funding together to expand the range of curriculum options available to students to boost both engagement and retention. And it's important that I, I say this to you, and I've been saying this at various principal functions over the last few weeks, that equity funding is ongoing. Now, we've got a battle with the feds in terms of Gonski funding, the difference between years five and six, uh, the difference between the heads of agreement and what is currently on the table by the federal government in terms of indexation, that difference is $950 million from 2019 and every single year after to Victorian schools. But the message I wanted to give you is that equity funding that is making the difference this year, that is ongoing funding. So when you get your SRP for next year, your SRP for the year after that, that additional significant boost to needs based funding will continue, whether it's direct needs based funding or whether it's the catch up loading, all of that money will continue for all your schools. So the education state targets are ambitious, uh, they're stretch targets and deliberately so. We need to set our expectations high and back, out, back you as our leaders to achieve them. We're confident about the capacity of our system to deliver excellence and equity in equal measures because we're confident about the difference you make in our schools every single day. Our government is committed to giving principals the resources, tools and networks needed to support your students to do their best. As part of the education state reforms we announced last year, we're identifying 80 highly capable principals who will engage with schools in their efforts to improve performance under the Expert Leaders Program. And we're training 200 principals and assistant principals to ensure they're equipped with the leadership skills needed to train and develop up to 1,300 high potential teachers. We also understand how important regional education support staff members are for principals, which is why we've uh, introduced an additional 150 staff across the state as part of our regional support initiative. Supporting our principals is absolutely critical because we understand the need to foster great leaders in our system to help lead and inspire everyone to be better. But we also know that the single most important thing we can do to improve student outcomes is to improve the quality of teaching, not the quality of teachers, the quality of teaching and learning in every classroom. It's no secret that our government has been looking at ways to improve the quality of teaching in both our existing workforce and our graduate teachers. We've started investing in our teachers, including over $21 million to make sure our teachers and schools are supported to implement the new Victorian curriculum. And $27 million for primary maths and science specialists in 200 Victorian schools. We'll continue to look at other measures to boost teaching quality. We need to make sure that teaching training, teacher training courses deliver strong, well-equipped workforce for the future. We need to attract teachers of the highest caliber to help our young people reach their potential. That's why I'm very pleased to be announcing tonight the release of our discussion paper on initial teacher education in Victoria. You might be thinking, well, that's very boring, we're announcing the release of the discussion paper. <laughs> it's more than that. It is a discussion paper I'm releasing tonight. You'll see it in the papers tomorrow. But it will lead to decisions that we will make by the end of the year that will, be, will deliver reform and change for graduates going into the universities for 2018. There will be change here. The paper, Working Together to Shape Teacher Education in Victoria, contains proposals that build on the national reform agenda and best practices already underway in Victoria. So these potential reforms outlined in the discussion paper include setting higher academic standards for entry to teaching courses, Assessing students at the end of their training with a universal capstone assessment. Significantly strengthening induction and mentoring. And developing a mechanism to assess non-academic qualities as part of the selection process and entry to teaching courses. Quite significant reform. Now I don't know where we're going to land on each of those things, but we will be making change, we'll be announcing change at the end of the year. 
The discussion paper sets out a vision for teacher education as one in which teaching is a profession of choice for committed people from a range of backgrounds who have the capabilities and qualities to be successful in their studies and make excellent teachers. There are multiple high quality pathways into teaching that attract high caliber candidates and ensure a diverse and steady supply of teachers. Initial teacher education providers, schools, the school system, and all our education stakeholders work together effectively to respond to changing demands and prepare future generations of excellent teachers through high quality courses. Induction, mentoring, and professional development opportunities are well established in every setting to support beginning teachers in their early years and lay the foundation for ongoing professional engagement and growth. I really want to make this year the year of the profession. Uh, we've got an EBA that we're negotiating at the moment. Those negotiations are progressing well, aren't they, Meredith? <laughs> so we've got, we've got the EBA. Um, we've got some further things we want to do in regards to workforce reform and I want to see significant reform in initial teacher education. We'll consult widely on the proposals in this paper and I look forward to working with VAST and working with all of you on this. I look forward to the feedback we receive and to the positive changes we can make in Victoria. So in conclusion, I recently came across a book that really brought home for me the power of education leadership. Published in 1914, and called Principles of Secondary Education. There is a section titled The Principal and the Teacher. And in, the, in that section is this line. As is the principal, so is the school. He goes on to say that a heavy responsibility of leadership rests with the principal, but so does the splendid possibilities of service. And that, the turn of the century author contends, will be felt in every classroom. More than 100 years on, the splendid possibilities of service that you all embody, all embody are still felt in classrooms across the state. I know this because of what I saw at the Premier's uh, DC Awards back in April. That night, 312 awards were presented to 289 students from 132 schools across Victoria based on their outstanding 2014 and 15 VCE study scores. During that night, a video was played of some of those students reading notes to their 50-year-old selves. They were so full of hope and possibility, imagining lives for themselves as surgeons, cancer researchers, inventors, famous novelists and parents. And also during that evening and that award ceremony, so many of them spoke about the powerful impact of, of their teachers and of their principles. And that is, the, uh, that is the power of the education, the power of this profession. No other profession can make that lifelong connection, that, that life-changing connection to young people. I still think very fondly of my Year 12 politics teacher, Mr Desmond, my Grade 6 teacher, Mr Desmond. One month later, after the award ceremony, I had the privilege of seeing hundreds of Victorian teachers recognised for their enduring dedication to students and families. At that event, teachers with 40, 45 and 50 years of service reflected on a lifetime in their profession. In a video that day, teachers were all asked about their most memorable moment, and every single one of them, of course, involved a connection with a student. Tonight, I want to thank you all for inspiring our kids to dream big and make a difference in this world. I commend VAST for this great event, this conference, and our wonderful principals for your commitment, leadership, and stewardship of a great education system that together we will make universally an excellent one. Thanks very much.